All right, so we have our first semis finals match guaranteed, which is House of Lords versus 228th. Congratulations to 228th, and of course, congratulations to Fighting Monks. You guys did awesome making it this far in the tournament. Again, hands off to you guys, and I'm sure we'll see them again. We do have the uh, next match coming up, which is Smoke Adders versus Antares Scorpions. Let's go ahead and give it a breakdown of those two teams. We saw Smoke Adders in round one. They went to actually... I believe three matches. First match uh, drew to a draw. Second match uh, they had a DC. They had to drop a third time. And Smoke Adders came over uh, Black Star or um, yes, Black Star Alliance. So Antara Scorpions, you guys know these guys quite a bit. Want to give a rundown? I mean, are they aggressive team? Or are they passive? Are they going to sit back? What are your thoughts on that? I don't know. I really don't know what they're going to do here. And Terry Scorpions, they tend to like their spiders, so I'm expecting to see a few of those. As for being aggressive, I, you know, they're a smart team, so they might see something they can do aggressive and, and want to go for it. But they're also a team, I think, that's comfortable playing a little more passive. And so I'm not really sure what they're going to go for. As for Smoke Adders, you know, I haven't really, I haven't played against them at all. Maybe in open a couple times, but I'm not really sure their play style exactly. However, both the, you know, the Smoke, sorry, Merrick, Merrick Civil War, you have Smoke Getters is in that, so they do have experience there. As for Entery Scorpions, they have the Arhad and the MRBC experience, so they have a little more Assault Spear experience than Smoke Getters, so that could play into their favor. Let me rephrase that question. Seeing the successes we, we've seen so far in this quarterfinals, what would be your recommendation for these teams going into this match? I think that the range game has shown to be a nice way to set up the rest of the fight. I think that it's interesting too because we've seen the same DZ win all the times, which isn't something that necessarily is going to happen. I don't think that DZ is better. It's just how these games have gone. However, so they might have to look a little bit into which DZ they have and think about what type of a deck they want to go with. So joining us, Raffle, congratulations on 228th moving um, across. you want to give us a quick breakdown from your perspective, what happened in that last match? Um, so I was actually DCing that game. Our normal draft commander had wedding-related things to do. So uh, we were hoping for that side of the map. We were happy when we got it on the coin flip. Uh, we just wanted to take upper and sort of play the steady game because you can cover your base really well from that position. So we just sat there, we waited, we felt like we were getting good trades. Titan got that, uh, the good arty, and we knew we were up on damage, so we just were content to sit there and wait. Um, they pushed, and uh, we finished up. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to... It's harder to sum up games you've been in, I guess. Well, from my perspective, you guys did a good job at dictating the range. Both teams were ranged, but you guys seemed to get a lot more damage in. Obviously, the end of round screen showed that. Um, across the board, it wasn't like uh, you had some do extraordinary amounts of damage and no one else did anything. Um, great use of ECM, by the way. I just want to point that out. Uh, I think it was Magister Siri that said, you know, had Versinix was literally just sitting in the middle of your formation. I think that plays a huge role. Um, yes, he was able to poke out with those ERs, but for a team not being able to lock you up, I think it's it's huge. They don't know what target to you know call. They don't know who's who, and I think that goes a long way. And your guys' use of uh, Ravens there was uh, exceptional, and we saw that on uh, you know their team as well. They re they had the uh, three M's and they had the spiders as well in their formation. So ECM coming into effect on that on that uh, match. So anyways, congratulations, man. That was that was a good fight. Yeah, it was uh, it was a good game. I'm really excited to play Lords tomorrow. So now that you've you've played in that, you've just DC'd Antara Scorpions and Smoke Adders, uh, what are some things you, you would pass on, you know, to lead to success or at least, you know, advice that you would give? What what do you think works and what do you think doesn't work? Well, I was actually being careful about not mentioning it earlier, but I think that that uh, upper side uh, is very strong. I think that the, the upper side of Lower City is a very strong position to hold due to the things that I mentioned. It's it's very good for jump sniping as well as peeking. Uh, the points that you can take across from it on landing pad don't offer as much cover or as much space and are much more vulnerable to arty. And I think you can just cover your base really well. So 
I think that it's a good position to take. Be my are, piece of advice. Are you saying, like, uh, you guys pushed up to the upper, you still had the lights, you know, covering your base, they had all their heavies still near their base, uh, while they had their lights and mediums uh, up top near the dropship. Would you say that having upper dropship with your heavies and doing a lot of damage, that would have been better in that scenario? I, 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 I think that... I think that upper from lower side is actually very hard to counter. Um, we've seen, uh, we were actually scrimming SGR last night, and they countered it very well with a really quick push. So I think that there are definitely ways to count it, or counter it, but... Oh god, I'm getting poked. Oh, I have a weird noise, apparently. Okay, I think it was just my mic. It, uh, it's one of those retractable mics, so it's very nice if I'm moving my headset, but I never do that. Sometimes it just folds up into itself. Oh, Siri, Madge, what do you guys think of that? I thought it was a good fight. You know, I like that sit-back style. I think it's a little unfortunate with Assault that sometimes it can happen where one mech down really can control the rest of the game. But I thought I thought both teams played it fairly well. I just think that in the end you guys had a little bit better setup, and I think your arty placements were a lot better. One thing I'd say is, even if you're down a mech, it isn't entirely necessary to go right at that, mo mo at that moment if the rest of your trades seem to be going in your favor. Uh, we have played some skirmish and some assault matches actually on River City where just due to a freak, just out of the blue arty strike, one of our mechs gets headshot and we're down a mech from the start. But because we decided we had the superior position, uh, eventually winning the trade getting them worn down, putting together a push, and coming in for the final push at around three minutes, two minutes left, and using all the time available to equalize through that trade is a valid option if you find yourself down. One thing to point out too is running into enemy fire is always difficult, uh, and that's what you know unfortunately happened to them at the end. Coming across the bridge, lights, mediums were under fire, heavies, mediums, coming across the bridge, under fire. Same thing happened to, uh, you know, the 12th versus the Lords. You had the 12th literally pushing in, damaged already, into enemy fire. And that's really tough to, to pull back from and, uh, you know, get a kill or even win the match when you've already taken so much damage. And now you're running into, uh, you know, their fire, coordinated fire at that. All right, so it looks like we do have the next match. They are getting ready in lobby. Antara Scorpions versus Smoke Adders. And just a quick correction, that was Black Sheep then uh, Smoke Adders faced in Forest Colony on round one. So thank you for that uh, info. Both teams uh, are again getting ready, and they'll be green shortly. And this is going to be your last match of tonight. And this is the quarterfinals of the MWO Engagement Tournament. We will have the semis and the finals, three matches tomorrow night. Times will be posted on the brackets for that. And uh, it's going to be an interesting, uh, you know, last match tonight. I don't know who's going to, you know, I don't know who would be the favor in this. Uh, favor in this. I mean, obviously, I think Atara Scorpions are a little bit more known. And as far as the uh, competitive scene, you guys know them a little bit more than uh, Smoke Adders. But Smoke Adders is here for a reason, and uh, you never know. All it takes is, uh, you know, an unlucky shot, great strike, or a good push from a, a DC. I'm excited. All right, so we saw pretty much... Uh, I would say similar uh, tactics being used on that one. You had cataphracts on both sides. You had shadowhawks on both sides. Um, you had instead of uh, three L's, you had the cicada with you know two peeps. Um, and then we saw the steel jag. Your guys match. You guys brought mechs that I wouldn't have guessed the blackjack and stuff like that. Do you think we're gonna see anything different? I mean, are these guys known for mixing it up and using uh, crazy tactics? Yeah, I think, I think we'll see something a little bit different from both teams. Um, honestly, Scorpions is one of those teams that's always been pretty creative, I think. So I definitely expect something different. And I'll, I'll give it to uh, 228, really. It, it, there, our scrim last night with them, we were like, you know, eh, let's go with a little bit more range <laughs> after that scrim. And that's why we ended up taking those Dragon Slayers. And those black checks just fit in nicely with the tonnage. So it was, uh, it was something that was based on scrimming. Just makes perfect. 
All right, looks like teams are almost ready, so we'll let you guys know when they're green, then we'll be dropping. We've got uh, Raffle and Magician calling this match. You know, it, I, I've before we started this tournament, a lot of people, you know, think River City Assault sometimes can lean to stagnant matches. We haven't seen that. Even the House of Lords were very aggressive. Yes, two two or uh, yes, twelfth Donegal uh, Donegal uh, pulled back and was playing the defensive sort of turtle, um, but House of Lords didn't. I mean, they were still aggressive. They still knew they had the range. They still knew they had the advantage, and they pressed it. Even two twenty eighth and the match we just saw between the fighting monks, it still wasn't a you know just stale. Everyone just sits there. I mean, there was movement, you know. And as soon as uh, obviously uh, fighting monks pushed, um, you know. You had the lights from 228 pull back from their base. Because you do have to worry about base cap. Uh, Siri or Mad, you, you guys are saying it's what, 38 seconds for a cap of six, six mechs? Yes. So it's. I think on the order of three minutes for a solo cap. Hmm. How many Arty strikes does that mean in 36 seconds? <laughs> Three. 36 seconds would be like probably three arty strikes. Yeah. Assuming so they all damage. got on the point. Assuming they all got on the point at the same time. And nobody left at all. And you never have one of your mechs taking one for the team. Alright, they are all green. Alrighty. Alright, guys, here we go. Last match tonight Antara Scorpions versus Smoke Adders. Good luck. They are launching, so we'll be in shortly. Rafa, do you want to go through the drop decks? At least what we have? Yeah. So, for... Antares Scorpions, we have, uh, looks like three Cataphract, three Deltas, a Cicada, four Shadowhawks, two Jenners, and two Spiders. We don't yet have the drop deck for Smoke Hatter, but we'll try I to get that. I just got it. Okay. It is one Spider 5D, two Five Starters, one Cicada five, uh, 3M, one Blackjack, four Shadowhawks, and three Jagermax. All right, so Interior Scorpion will, will be in the red, and Smoke Adder will be in the blue. Uh, Mag, your join me is frozen. There we go. Okay, now we can see. Thank you. I was like, am I supposed to be spectating? Oh no, I've broken the cast. <laughs> oh, it's okay. all yours Interior now. Interior Scorpions does move up to their, the, the base, similar to what 228 did in the previous match. I, I gotta say, I think that's a really strong position. Uh, I think that it's hard to make a good push on it, and it's very well covered from sniping. So, I, I gotta, I gotta say, I favor that position. And we have smoke adders sitting back in their base area, uh, a little bit similar to what the Donegals were doing. Uh, they pushed up a little bit towards the end of the citadel with their lights. Now that might get within some turret damaged range basically some early artist strikes going down on that pocket area yeah and the thing about uh especially those lrm turrets is that if you don't have ecm once they are open as long as they have lock on you with a thousand meters they will keep shooting so they are very potent in the fact that they can harass you for a very long time well, this is interesting because this jaeger mech here Four one smoke adders is four machine guns, two ultra AC fives, and two medium pulse. So this is a brawl deck. You know, this is not your. This is not sitting back shooting with Gauss. So I wonder if they're going to try to go for a quick push at some point. Yeah, and I think that if they're going to, they're in the position to do it. They've got Citadel. I can't tell if they're taking shots on turrets, but it looks like they're trying to bring those turrets down a little bit, make sure that there isn't too much resistance when they push in, and they can't. Uh, the thing about pushing out from there is that to to shoot back from a push, you've got to expose yourself. So they could do damage while they're pushing across, and it's a fairly short space. So 
That's the place to do it. In response, Interior Scorpions has pushed back down about half their most of their mechs down towards their near their base, including their Jenners and Shadowhawks and Spiders. While their Cataphracts are still sitting up top trying to get shots away. Yeah, and those Cataphracts are going to be able to probably put down good air arty on the Citadel just because of the angles that they have, but they're not going to be able to get very good shots because direct fire shots on the Citadel are hard from where they are. So it's kind of just up to these lights to do initial damage right now and prevent them from pushing. So we see the 3 medium laser AC-20 out of the 2D Shadowhawks, which means there's a mix of brawl and range going on right now with the Antares Scorpions. And if they're fighting a full brawl, that's why those cataphracts can still get their damage off and hopefully whittle them down enough so that during the push, they will be doing all right. Looks like each team is fairly content to just sort of give it a little time. Neither one is too worried about rushing instantly. Of course, everybody's proving me wrong about the hyper aggression and needing to push right away. And you see, it's a Cicada 3M, Nautilus Command is sitting up there with, with the Cataphract 3Ds, perhaps providing a little ECM coverage, but he's also, I think, a 2PPC config. So, I like with the Raven, that with the last match, it does help provide a little bit of stealth ability on those snipers, as well as perhaps protect them with that stealth from Arty Strikes. Yeah, and it doesn't look like there's been a significant amount of damage on either side. I think the lowest mech is... Uh... Mensch, I'm not sure what he's in. Looks like he's, he's in a Shadowhawk. Shadowhawk. Two peeps and an Ultra AC5. Not too much. That's... Right leg red, That's that could hurt later on, but it's not too bad. It's spread out pretty good. Yeah, that might hurt in a brawling situation, but for now it's pretty negligible, especially if he's jump sniping well. Um, looks like we're seeing a bit of movement off the Citadel, up towards C4. But and one of the embers is down major. an arm. Oh. That's interesting. That actually, in this light deck, that actually does make a pretty big difference because it, it severely hampers their ability to do damage to armored targets. So if the mech is stripped, those four machine guns are going to do fine. But if not, you're not going to be able to harass their lights or their assault mechs very well. So now you're on Terry Scorpions, you know at this point that you have the Cataphract 3Ds and you might have picked up at this point that they got Brawler Heavies. What are you thinking about trying to do? Well, I mean, if you know that they're going for a brawl, I guess I... From that position, I feel like you can probably push down to your base fast enough. So I guess I would just keep going with the position they're in. They probably feel pretty confident about their trades. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I guess that's what I would be doing. It doesn't appear like they're, the opponent is getting a ton of like great shots on them or a ton of damage on any of their mechs. So I think that they're happy to just kind of hold back, take some good shots, be ready for the push, um, and not make any mistakes. I really wish I could see what Mango's got in his Jenner K. I'm guessing he has two PPCs, but he could be two ER large as well. I think I saw PPCs for him. Yeah. He has two PPC according to the info I was given. Now this cicada yeah. is in the water. He is all alone, and if those lights want to try to jump him, I think they could really take him down pretty quick, actually. It's yeah, he doesn't have a ton of spire support. It looks like a lot of those mechs are actually sitting behind the citadel, but he's fallen back now. It doesn't look like there's going to be any engagement there. I think both teams are a little bit afraid to make the engagement. They both want to. They both want the win. They're both playing passively. Right, and now Mensch is the, the, uh, has most damage right now, 70%. He's just sitting up there on that ramp on the Citadel. Gets, yeah, takes, takes another shot. Yeah. He is playing the most forward, and he is getting uh, punished for it, as you can see by his health. Uh, if, they, if they can focus down that leg from a distance, that could be a huge disadvantage, because then he wouldn't actually be able to participate in the brawl. I'm going to be honest, it always makes me a little nervous when I see lights sitting on this right side of the boat. Anybody who's near the borders, it always makes me nervous because sometimes these maps, you know, you think you're safe, you don't see the countdown or it doesn't go off and all of a sudden, oh. Yep. Yeah. I've done it before. Looks like... But yeah, they're, they're getting really good shots, especially on that weekend Shadowhawk. He's down to 68% now. Uh, that is the lowest health of any mech on the field, but everybody else is fairly healthy, and I think that that is probably just shield arm damage. 
Although that is a, a left-handed mech, so it might be some critical components. Looks like the, the cataphracts are content to just sort of sit upper. Everybody's doing their best to make good shots. Uh, oh, that Jaeger mech, was, was that down a UAC? No, I think it was just jammed. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I forget about that mechanic. Back in my day, in closed beta, UX didn't jam, and they were really, really overpowered. And you had to toggle the buttons in the right sequence to unjam them. Oh yeah, the first, the first iteration of the jam mechanic. Oh, that was. I actually really liked that. It made jamming your UX like scary. Let's bring that back. You heard it here, folks. I think it lasted two weeks. Yeah, it was, unless it was, you, it was very quick. unless you had a macro and it didn't, yeah. jam, didn't jam at all. Yep. Macro people. All right, so Mensch is now, he's bound to 68%. But again, it's it's spread out damage, right leg damage the most, so he's not in a horrible position. It's just he's, he's want to be careful because he doesn't want to be the one picked off. He doesn't want, if he has his ultra ammo on that leg, you don't want that artist, single artist strike rip off that leg, and then all of a sudden you have ammo explosion and you can die or be seriously crit. And uh, the 2D, those lasers are actually all in that left arm, so that could be a huge damage reduction for him if he loses that arm. Um, he is still poking, though. He's still very much out in front. He's not uh, pulling back. So it, that is a vulnerability that could be taken advantage of. So just looking at the positioning in the builds, who do you guys favor for an engagement? I think based on how it's flowing so far, I have to favor Antares Scorpions with the Cataphracts because they're able to play this range game. And Smoke Adder hasn't tried to push the brawl. You know, they haven't even tr they haven't tr repositioned to maybe thinking about taking on those cataphracts and pushing on top of them. So right now it's playing into Antares Scorpion's hands. However, when it gets to late game, you, you don't know. You just don't know what what it's a game to change. Yeah, I, you bring up a good point. They might be able to make a good push across water if they were to just like slowly pull a few mechs back from Citadel and uh, make it look not like a push. They could probably push on the other side just underneath bridge and get up and actually separate those cataphracts from their team. Oh no, those Shadow Hawks are actually moving up there now it looks like. So, yeah, I'm they might have moved up here to support the 3 in case of the push. <laughs> yeah. But they also could be thinking about pushing across the way, as um, we did SJR, we pushed across the way there. That is an option you can take. But you know, they have a cataphract still sitting back in their base area, so they're not they're not rushing anything. And the other cataphract, McHarg, is also pushing down back towards their their base area. Yeah, I think that they've just realized that the the sniping is to be done by their base, so they're shifting, so that they have they have a presence in both areas. They don't want uh, Smoke Adder to be able to take that upper area for free. Still pretty healthy all around, a couple mechs dropping down into the 70%, but that can just be uh, shield, arm and sh shield arm damage and stuff like that. So it doesn't actually mean that they're out of the fight or even in danger of dying. Uh, those Jenners are still poking from boat. It's I think both teams are probably just going to hold uh, until they feel like they can get the advantage in a situation. Now, Mench has moved back a little bit more safe area, but he's still, I think, in, a, in an area that could uh, a mech could get line of sight on to get an Arty on, and he probably should be sitting back maybe a little bit farther. He doesn't. He's still one of the more forward mechs in the team, and when you're the lowest 60% damage, even though you have that range set up, and you might be one of the few mechs that does have that, you see those four cataphracts, and you got you're not gonna out jump snipe four cataphracts. You're not gonna out damage them from that range. Even though you have a few other max with, the, say, the ER large or the PVCs, it doesn't really play into your. Yeah, I think that the problem with waiting with a brawling composition is that you're going to take way more sniper damage or sniping damage than they are. So the longer you wait to push in with a brawl deck, the more uh, you're at a disadvantage. Oh, those! It looks like there are a couple spiders up by landing pad. Maybe getting a little bit of scouting. Yeah, it's a spider and an ember, but there is a spider, a Jenner, two Jenners, and a Cicada 3M for interior scorpions sitting up at their base. Now, the only problem is you could get a little bit stuck in these positions because you just can't really figure out what to do. Where is the vulnerability? You're trying to find it, but you don't really see it, so you're, and you don't want to risk it. It's a 
it's quarter quarterfinals. You don't want to risk it too much on a on a, an aggressive push unless you feel pretty comfortable. So teams might get a little paralysis. Yeah, and I think that the the lights from the lights from Smokeheader could actually be in a dangerous position. The the four lights on the opposite side could make a push over and take him. I'm not sure how close, uh, what kind of decks those are. Though I'm sure a couple genders could probably make easy work of a spider and an ember, though. One thing I'll well, that one ember too is this... missing two. Oh, that's right. Ahead, that sorry. one ember is missing an arm. One thing I'll note about this is that it's not necessarily a positional disadvantage for Antares Scorpions that Smoke Edder has to look for. It's the drop deck they have to be aware of because the Scorpions are running the Cicada and two Jenners both with two PPC and they have two Spiders with ER large and two mediums. And when it comes down to a brawl, there is not enough sustain there for that to be a powerful light lance. So if there was enough durability and momentum behind a push, they could roll over these mediums and the heavies, even though the mediums are brawlers. Now before Gamer for the lights come to play. Oh, wow, Gamer that's... is a one-shot kill on that rear right torso on a spider. Oh, that's actually really, really dangerous. He's got to be careful with that. He cannot like, even think about facing that torso towards the enemy. Not just that, but if he wanders into any strike, he's dead. Yeah, that's a good point. We haven't seen a lot of strikes, actually, this game. I've actually found that quite them. surprising. Uh, now, Donnie Lines also. Any? Oh, no, there's, there's been quite a few. Okay. Do Donnie Lines also is uh, well, pretty close to one shot, killing a rear left torso on a spider there, sitting back, or sitting in the, the ramp there out of the town. Yeah, so it does look like base. some of the damage that has been done has been pretty pinpoint damage. And that's the that's the problem with uh, the percentage indicators that you can't necessarily tell is that, you know, is that 60% all in CT or is that 60% spread out all over the max, so. A Jenner at like 86% could be one point away oh, from death on a CT. looks like we have a push going on though. Antares, it looks like, has balled up in Upper City and is ready to push over. Uh, there's just light max here to stop this push. We see an this could be a really on big, top. yeah, already really big on top. And Smokeatter hasn't actually replied to rotate out, though those lights are trying to get out through the party room and out the back, and they might just make it here, but they are taking some damage. The thing is, is that this is going to give Antares a much better position up on top. They're now going to be able to start taking down turrets and really hitting these mechs if they don't reposition fast enough. There's not a lot of cover near Citadel from uh, Dropship if you're not moving back towards the base, but then you're exposing yourselves to this spider and this Jenner and the turrets. They did get a really good arty strike there on Cybersphere and that Shadowhawk 2H. And I, I like this uh, movement by Mango and Max. They're sitting back in your base just spotting in case the other team decided to counter push towards their base. So, you know, it's a really good idea to just, it's giving you a little extra insurance on your push. You feel a little safer. Yeah, turrets are, turrets are dangerous, but if you push all 12 mechs at once, they can't take you down before you cap a base. So you've got a lot of shots going down right now. Antares has taken uh, Dropship and is moving to that ledge to snipe. And it looks like uh, Smoke Adder is actually just holding back in the city. Uh, they're not gonna. They're not gonna make any big pushes. They're not gonna do anything like that. They're just gonna try and defend, make sure that they're getting good shots in on Antares. So Cyrus here rotate out the back, but he's using the triple AC2 Shadowhawk, so he can sit a little bit farther back. And he's damaged. Red. He could be another couple shots. He might lose his weapon. So he has to be Buddy, uh, pretty careful here. Uh, his weapons aren't that far off because it is left torso. It looks like there isn't a ton of time left on the game, but both teams are still sort of playing it a little bit passive. Nobody has died yet, but we do see two mechs at 50%, and both of them are from smoke adders. We do have a counter push now going on towards Anterior Scorpion's base with these Shadowhawks and lights. Yeah, it looks like, actually, they're pushing uh, the majority of their mechs over, and this Jenner and the Spider really need to be careful. If they get picked out, they're going to be down a kill, and their entire team is on the other side of the map. Yeah, Mango's playing really close to that border, too. He could explode if he gets in trouble here. But they, Interior Scorpions is rotating, but not to, not very quickly. I think the Cat Frack 3Ds might be a standard engine thing, because they're going fairly slow. And you see the rest of the mechs from uh, Smoke Adder are pushing towards the base. They are starting to cap the base. 
Yeah, it looks like we see three, maybe four mechs on the base, so it's definitely close, and I'm not... Oh, but it, the lights are there. The lights will be able to sacrifice themselves if they need to prevent the cap, but it's got to be close, though, because there's only two minutes and 40 seconds left, so you've got to be careful with those lights sacrificing to stop the cap, because you might not be able to make it back and make up that difference, and we see two mechs actually go down for Smoke Adder. Yeah, it looks like probably an arty left. strike there. Yep. Quarter left on the cap. What about that cap and Scorpions is back and defending? Yep, one to three in terms of kills in favor of Antares Scorpions. Looks like they dropped Artie and then ran their lights in once they got those two kills. They weren't worried about being down on that point val or kill value anymore. And now there's just a but huge brawl going on around the point. Yeah, it's a big brawl here, but you can't leave the cap because it is that close. But they are up four kills to one right this time. Yeah, with the Jaeger Max, it's crit rear, pretty crit on the, on the front too. But it's 2-5 now in, front, in favor of Venturi Scorpions. Yeah, you can't leave the cap, but neither can your opponent. So if you have mechs to spare, if you're up this 2-6, to six, you can just run one mech on and drop strikes, because then you're doing way more damage than you're taking. And that's reflected in the score. We see two, or, sorry, three mechs down for Antari Scorpions compared to eight mechs down for Smoke Adders. That looks yeah, it like looks like Antari Scorpions going to have it, because they have their turrets also working in their favor at this point. They're up 3-9. to nine. So a couple more mechs left to go, leg mechs, mostly crit mechs, it should end. Um, some mechs are fairly stripped here, Xerix is stripped, so I think yeah, it looks like it might end in the next second here. They're up by yep, one last mech to go down. That was a good game. The this last mech going down? Still up, still fighting. Doing its best. One thing to note is that when you have a cap like that, it's sometimes not best to just put everybody on it, especially if they're already back. What you can do is you can put your uh, damaged or weakened max on it and push your fresh ones straight into the enemy's face and try to delay instead of just fighting in the one spot where you all have the same angles and you all, uh, well, you're all stationary, so it's pretty easy to hit you and pick components off. Man, that okay. Shadowhawk. That is a pile of max if I've ever seen one. That is a pile of mechs. That last Shadowhawk would not go down, but it looks like the game is in fact over, and Antares Scorpion takes the win. Would you that was a call good it, game. Would you call it a heap of mechs, or is it still just a pile? Ooh. Hmm. I think because of the tonnage, I would still call it a pile. It would be a scrap pile. If there was maybe pile. an atlas, yeah, if there was like an atlas, we could call it a heap, I guess. But a good match. Um, we saw some interesting, a lot of movement in that game, which was nice. It wasn't, uh, I will admit, the game I played in was slightly stagnant, not gonna lie. But we did see a lot of movement, some good shots taken, and a nice push and brawl there at the end. Hawkins got 611 damage, and he had those two wow. kills that we saw from that Artie strike. Uh, that's what Arties do. You know, they, what happens is we're saying you sit back and trying to get a couple Artie strikes, but when you put maybe four or five mechs on a base and you get hit by an Artie, that is a lot of direct damage as well as splash damage, and that those add up so fast. And really, you're almost giving them a, a huge jump in their lead unless you're going to get that cap down. And they had it down really close, probably about another uh, 10, 11 seconds with two or three mechs on there, but Interior Scorpions was able to return their mechs there in time and defend the base. I think from the science we've done, it's about... 80 to 90 damage per mech in in a strike if it's a arty strike and so you're yeah when you have five guys on there that's 400 damage All yeah right. that's, uh, that's a lot of damage you put on go ahead phil eyes from the sky well played across the board um i don't know which one of you it was just a second ago you said you don't want to push all of your guys onto the cap because of arty right and that's exactly what they did I feel like if they would have put, you know, maybe two, three, and then set up, so you know what's going to happen, and Taurus Scorpions were rushing back, you might have been able to select fire, you know, take them out one at a time, maybe two, you know, something like that. But as soon as they balled up, I watched that first Artie strike go down, it knocked out a uh, Jaeger, and the Cicada was crit, and uh, something else got knocked out in that pile. And it is, that was, I couldn't even tell what was going on. There was so much smoke coming off the mechs. I just feel that it wasn't lost. You know, I mean, they, they pushed up, they hit the cap, the points started going down. 
set up for, you know, defense. Let them try to come in and you continue to fight. I just feel like that sort of plays into the whole strike and arty strikes is if you clump together like that. And we've seen it, uh, you know, even with the, the Steel Jack match that you guys, uh, same thing happened. The enemy team balled up. <laughs> you just dropped arty and airstrikes on it. And, you know, uh, bad day for the, the team. Um, I feel like it was actually a, a pretty good game across the board. Antares was being the more aggressive ones. Uh, obviously, when they took the dropship, uh, they had lines of sight down on the enemies. It was a good push by um, the smoke adders to push across. I feel like it was a good move. I, I think it surprised Antares that they did it. Um, but I will say, uh, Antares, uh, their lights did a good job. Um, Hulkins with those two peeps. I feel like that was a really good tactic taking the two peeps on the uh, the Jenners and uh, they were able to do a lot of damage to those Shadowhawks and you guys kept pointing out a few of their uh, the smoke adders mechs were very stationary in their movements literally getting hits when they probably shouldn't have got hits and I feel like that sort of played out too at the end uh, a lot of them were damaged and uh, you know literally one airstrike and it took them out that means the mech was already hurt as is so uh, anyways, congratulations to uh, Antara Scorpions. They will be facing you guys, Steel Jaguar Gaming, for the semifinal rounds uh, tomorrow. And we'll have the brackets posted up as soon as possible. But yeah, any last moment, uh, last minute comments on that match? I mean, what led to success there? Was it the, was it the airstrikes at the end? Was it just Antara's, their tactics of, you know, keeping at range and those Jenners? What do you guys feel was the uh, clutch there? They were able to do a lot of damage from a distance, uh, both in the the beginning of the game and then in the end with those air arty. So I think that they were just able to put damage on their opponent without taking damage. They won the trades. You have to say the smoke adders push was the deciding factor. I mean, that was the initiator of the results. Until they had done that, they they could have sat back. I mean, the push was that about about three minutes or so, and if they would have sat back, they might have done it. I mean, that, that game got really towards the end, and I think that Smoke Adders, they could have gone for the draw, but they decided that they wanted to go for the win. They must have seen, they saw that there was only a few lights there, and then Terry Scorpions had rotated mostly top, so it is a good it is a good choice to try to do that. If they could have, especially if they could have gotten that kill on Mango or the other light there, they could have pulled back into the water and tried to retreat back to their turrets. Uh, since they didn't get that kill and they started getting the turrets down, or the, the base down while they had a few mechs on there, uh, they stuck with it. And in the end, though, Inter Scorpions was able to return just in time to defend that base and get a few arties to cause a lot of that damage. Do you think they would have had any luck if they had pushed on the enemy team instead of the base? What do you think, Raffle? Um. So that... At the beginning, when I, you remember me saying uh, when the cataphracts were up on top, it was in, you know, like the first five to seven minutes of the game where all they had was the cataphracts up on top and the rest of their mechs were down by their base. I think that if they had taken their mechs and done a coordinated push through the river, they didn't need to go all the way up to platform. They could have just jumped down through river, under bridge, over gardens, and then up into upper city. I think that would have given them enough surprise and enough time that they would have only been facing those cataphracts and maybe like one or two light mechs that got there in time. But you saw that those light mechs had PPCs, so they wouldn't have been a ton of help in a brawl. I think they could have gotten up on kills and then held that position up there or fallen back to their base if they'd wanted to. Yeah, I'd have to agree. So I, think, I, think, they were... I think they had the better brawl deck, especially with the light support. Uh, on Taurus Scorpion's lights were long range. Uh, the Jenner's an oppressed fight against an Ember. They're not going to hold up. The Ember's going to win, especially I mean, close range, 90 meters. Not to mention the Ember's, you know, just going to tear them apart. I feel like the deciding factor, just like Magician said, is when they pushed and then they put everyone on the cap. They could have also pushed to later on. Um, they wouldn't have been getting shot at by the turrets, and uh, obviously they wouldn't have been, you know, clumped up in, a, in a, you know, uh, when Atarius took the uh, dropship. They could have also pushed there. Um, but uh, ultimately, Antares had the higher ground, so I don't know if anything would have been different as far as the result, but you never know. Yeah, it was a good game. Well fought by both teams. And, of course, Antares Scorpions moves on to the semifinals. I just want to say congratulations to all the teams, House of Lords, 228, Antares Scorpions, and Steel Jaguar Gaming 4, moving on to the quarter and semifinals, and we'll have those brackets up tomorrow. 
quick shout out to everyone that uh, joined us tonight. Thank you again. You guys are awesome. Make sure to hit that follow button. That way you guys get email notifications when we go live on the Twitch stream. And we will be streaming the matches tomorrow night. It will be after 6 p.m. Eastern, just to, if you want to mark that down on your uh, your calendar. Anyway, some quick shout outs to Serio Thrax, the magician from SJR, and the War Room podcast. And the host and uh, of that podcast is Rafa Waffle. And if you haven't checked out the War Room podcast, make sure to do so. Um, it talks basically all about the competitive scene. Sometimes they talk about a specific you know, element of the competitive scene. Sometimes they talk about stuff that goes on in the comp- competitive scene. So make sure to check them out. And they're on uh, Twitch as well. Raffle, you do that live at uh, twitch.com, rafflewaffle49. So you can check out that. They're also on YouTube as well. You can check out all the past recordings. And again, this is watching the competitive scene. If you want to hear about the competitive scene, these guys are the ones who talk about it. Uh, weekly, so make sure to check out their YouTube and uh, Twitch page. But anyways, thank you guys. You guys did awesome. Any shout-outs before we get off here? Uh, you basically promoted me for me. I guess I don't really have that much to say. Uh, we've been doing a little bit of a hiatus from War Room since I've been moving, but I'm back now. The tournament's going to be over tomorrow, so we'll be back with it live every Thursday starting next week. So thank you very much for having us, by the way. This has been a blast. I just want to say, uh, if anybody wants to check out some more matches, we have SJR versus 228 going on in Merrick Civil War.